So 2 Timothy chapter 1, and this is the, it's 8 to, to, to 16, uh, that 8 to 18 is it we're, we're looking at. And uh, we're going to be uh, covering this today, and so um, here we go. I just want to give you a bit of recap from last week. I talked about last week just uh, some foundational truth um, that the Apostle Paul got, as it were, uh, from the Lord, and he uh, gave it, as it were, to uh, Timothy. And so there was this sense of hot off the press kind of um, ministry that Paul had to Timothy. Uh, Paul says these foundational truths, ingredients that represent God will be in everything uh, that we do from now on. So Paul is wanting to tell Timothy that there are some qualities that will be the hallmarks, the influence factor in the reality of the message uh, that we live and speak. And they were these, grace, mercy and peace and whatever we do in life God's grace mercy and peace will be a reflective fruit a, a, a sense of uh, uh, kingdom uh, authenticity Paul says to Timothy a kinder afresh the gift of God that is within you and I said last week he meant wake up something that was in you that had gone asleep um, he says I know whom I have believed. And I asked the question, challenging you, uh, do you know whom you have believed? And the reality of knowing something at a level that really connects us to what we know. I declared finally that he is Lord. And I asked the question of you, he may be Lord of all, but is he Lord of you? Is he your Lord? Is he your Saviour? Is he your God? And so that was a, a kind of a synopsis of the chapter in uh, the first part of chapter 1. Now, we're into uh, 1, uh, 8, 18. So God uh, does not want us to be afraid, I said. God does not want us to be controlled by fear. Which means, if we are afraid, we are not trusting in God. If we are not trusting in God, then we are trusting in ourselves. And trusting in ourselves has always gotten us into trouble. Uh, if we do this, uh, then the fear that we are trusting in will manipulate our lives and cause us to do things that we should not do as children of God. And you, I said your life testimony, your life testimony that is seen by others will be undermined if what they see when they look at you is fear. Fear that intimidates you and robs you of the security that the Father longs to bring to you when you trust in him. And Paul is wanting Timothy to capture this truth and make it known to the church in Ephesus. To act in the right way uh, and the right way to act is according to the will, purpose and plans of God. According to the purposes of God. Jesus said, you will know them by the fruit. If you are bearing the fruit of fear in your testimony to other people around you, your credibility in their eyes, as far as God is concerned, will be lost. God does not want us to convey fear to people. He wants us to convey those qualities that I mentioned. A grace, mercy and peace. And peace that comes when we know we are secure. Fear will manipulate you if you let it. And Paul doesn't want Timothy to be living in fear. It will control your emotions. It will control what you think. And it will not make you available to the will, purpose and plans of God. For him to use you in his world while you remain alive on the earth. As you affect the life situations that you encounter. If fear is controlling you, it will rob you of shining out your glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Paul said to Timothy, don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of me. Don't be ashamed of the message. Don't be ashamed of the messenger. I wonder sometimes, are we afraid of the message? Ashamed of the message even? Embarrassed by the message? 
So those of you that go on to uh, the, what, the WhatsApp, per, uh, Perfect Gateway WhatsApp, will, would have received a, a little video that Josh sent regarding a young man on the streets in America that would, was, was preaching the gospel. And then he was afflicted and, um, and, and he was kind of uh, he mocked and uh, he was being chanted and, and challenged by what he was saying. Uh, and in all of that kind of chaos, uh, he, was, uh, you know, he was coming under attack because of the gospel. Uh, and, and, but in that journey, he ended up ministering to someone and delivering a young man, uh, obviously in great uh, uh, dire straits. He, he, he delivered that young man from uh, spirits that were manipulating his life. Spirits of alcohol and, and, and other things um, that were just keeping this, this man in bondage. Um, but are you ashamed of the gospel? Do you find yourself sometimes when people talk loudly about Jesus? Or when you're walking down the road singing and then all of a sudden someone comes out of their car and you stop singing because you're a bit embarrassed by that? Well, Paul says we should be courageous, we should be bold, we should not be ashamed of the gospel. In fact, when, as we walk down the street and sing our songs of praise to God, we give ourselves an oracle opportunity to proclaim the name of God to people. I encourage you to be singers on the streets and singers in your workplace and singers in your schools. Yes, you're going to get persecuted. Yes, you're going to have harassment, but you'll be declaring the reality of the wonders of God. And you'll be allowing your spirit to grow and express God's love to you. Paul says, don't be ashamed of me. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed of the gospel. Don't be ashamed of the messenger. We are led, brothers and sisters, by the power of God, led by the love of God, and led by the disciplines of God. God has put his spirit inside of us to help us and lead us as we journey through this life. So Paul mentions this thing called uh, the promise of life. And I ask the question, what is this promise of life that Paul is speaking of? Christians, I said, while on earth, while we remain on earth, can live in the atmosphere of heaven long before we ever get there. What is a clear conscience? Satan had nothing in Jesus. So Jesus could say, he has nothing in me. Satan has nothing in you to accuse you. You might say, well, what about all the things that I do wrong? Listen, God has forgiven you, therefore you have no right to be accused anymore. All who have been redeemed by Jesus are free from the condemnation of sin. So there's no reason why Satan can accuse you anymore. What does it mean to be timid? It means to be driven by anxiety, to be weak and to be vulnerable. And Timothy was seemingly having that kind of character. Um, what does it mean to be afraid of the Lord's testimony? It means not to stand up like that young man with the saints and be a proclaimer of, your, of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ as you live your life, as you shine out your glory, as people see what it means to be a Christian and to have the Lord Jesus as their saviour and the Holy Spirit working inside of them. What was the gift of God that Timothy, uh, that Timothy was talked about by Paul? Um, that he had um, settled down uh, within himself to sleep, but he needed something uh, to wake up. You know, Timothy was an evangelist, and uh, he had allowed that testimony uh, that was in him to become dormant. I wonder, have you uh, allowed gifts that God has given you, gifts that he wants you to use to bless the world, to become dormant. In, in Matthew, we can read where it says that um, those who called him Lord, Lord, would not enter the kingdom of God. And they said, we cast out demons in your name. We, we did all sorts. Of, and Jesus said, I never knew you. Those who have not used their gifts, but buried them in the sand. God wants you to wake up those gifts. And Paul is encouraging Timothy to wake that gift up within him to be a proclaimer of the gospel. God has given to us a spirit of power, love and discipline. Whatever God gives us is always good for us. Can we say amen? Amen. amen.
So what is Paul's testimony? Well, Paul's testimony is his journey to God. And you have a testimony, your testimony of your journey to God. And we should always, Peter says, give, be ready to give an account of the hope that is within us. I wonder how often do you give your testimony to others as it relates to the reality of the glory of God setting you free, like we sang about with those prisoners on the uh, YouTube app there. What was Jesus' Christ's testimony that Paul mentions? Jesus' Christ's testimony was his journey, brothers and sisters, to the cross, from the cradle to the grave. Jesus' journey, Jesus' testimony was his journey to the cross. Paul wants Timothy to know that proclaimers of the gospel will be persecuted. They will suffer for doing so. And you know, for so long, Christians have been hidden in the barracks and they're not prepared to proclaim and give their testimony. Now that's not there for us to feel guilty. But like Paul was saying to Timothy, we need to stir up the gift. And what is the gift? The gift is the gift of love, the love of God that is seen in our lives as we encounter and work through the problems and the situations, as, we, as others see how God's intervention into our lives transforms the way we go through those difficult journeys. That's the testimony that God wants us to be by way of a proclaimer. But the byproduct is we will be persecuted for it. We will suffer for doing that, for, pers for, for presenting our, our testimony. We will be persecuted by the world and we will be persecuted by the religious. You know the Good Samaritan story. There were two people that passed by before the Samaritan man came. And they disregarded the opportunity that was before them to serve that man who was in great need. But when we reconnect to God, all of a sudden, the reality of our purpose is made clear. You see, God has saved us. God has saved us by the, our faith in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. That's God's provision. God saved us but I ask you the question today, are you saved? God has called us, but I ask you the question, do you know your calling? You see, until you know you're saved, until you know you are called, you are without purpose. You're just maligning yourself with the responsibilities of life. But when you know you are called and when you know you are saved, you regain the reality of your purpose. And your purpose, brothers and sisters, is to do the will of God. And when you reconnect to God, you regain your purpose. The very thing that Adam lost in the garden, you regain when you reconnect to God through your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And what is that holy calling? A holy calling is to be set apart to serve the will and purposes of God. The, to serve the will and purposes of God. And to choose, to choose not to serve yourself. So that we live and move and have our being in Him. We live for the will and the purposes of God. Not to serve ourselves, but to serve God. And you see, the reality of fulfilment in life only comes when we rediscover our purpose. And our purpose in serving God will bring us the greatest delight while we live our lives. And one of the reasons we need to be delivered from fear is because fear will hamper our ability to trust God in difficult situations. And so we will fend for ourselves. And God doesn't want us to fend for ourselves. God wants us to trust him 
Because he is our deliverer. He is our healer. He is our provider. He is our Lord. He is our saviour. And everything that we need can be found in God. Once we understand what it means to entrust ourselves to the will, purpose and plans of God. What is a holy calling that Paul mentions to Timothy? It is to be set apart to serve the will and purposes of God and to choose not to serve ourselves. Now this, brothers and sisters, this is an unachievable, an unachievable goal. And if we were left to our own devices, none of us would ever be in a position to be able to accomplish this. But the great thing about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ is that we are not left to our own devices. We have been given the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the restorer, the, 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 the inspirer. And not only have we been given the Holy Spirit, but we have been given the Holy Spirit to live in us. And this is a wonderful thing. It means that wherever we go, he goes with us. Whatever we get up to, he's doing it with us. God is with us. Emmanuel. And the Holy Spirit lives inside us to enable us to do the very thing that we can't do by that precious word that was a characteristic of one of the things that Paul mentioned. Grace. By grace we can do what we can't do because God gives us what we don't have to do and be what we can't be. Which is why God has given us his grace to achieve and accomplish his will. The grace that God has shown us because Jesus went to the cross. We can, if we ask, receive it. The cross reconnected us to God. Something that we know the Lord could never do. The cross, brothers and sisters, has done. The Apostle Paul knows his calling is to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Paul knew what he was about. The Apostle Paul, um, he, he knew that um, by, by, by being a church planter, he would experience an incredible amount of persecution. He is a preacher of the gospel, which means he inspires others to be involved in the same passion that he himself was involved with, which was serving the real purpose plan of God. So that we would serve God in the same way that the Apostle Paul served God. He is a teacher, which means he is a quipper, an equipper, sustaining Christian to remain faithful to God by applying the truth that he taught them through the letters that he got by way of revelation from God. He knows we will sustain faithfulness if we stay close to the truth of his word. If we rely on ourselves, we will always be distracted and go astray. But when we rely on his word, the Bible, 66 or precious things, 66 books of wonderful inspirations. When we rely on the Bible and we discover the Bible and we turn to the Bible and we extract from the Bible, we extract the revelations that people like the Apostle Paul penned to enhance our ability to remain faithful to God. And Paul encourages Timothy, remain faithful to the truth of God's word. Paul had experienced an incredible deal of persecution, hardship, suffering, ship, so many sufferings because he preached the gospel, because he planted churches, because he motivated others, because he equipped the saints. I wonder how much persecution do you know? How much persecution have you received? You see, we've been thinking that the kingdom of God is a bit like going down to Southampton and having two ships before us. One being a battleship and the other being um, a, an ocean liner, tra a cruise, travelling around the world. And we've been queuing up and we've all uh, so easily attempted to get on the cruiser 
and go on this journey. But God has not caused us to cruise. He's caused us to go to war, to go into battle, to break down the forces of darkness so that we can expose the revelation of the heart of God. The words, I know. We often hear people say this. I know. I think. I feel. But the words, I know, a bit like what Paul said when he says, I know something. I am convinced, he said. When we hear that word, I know, what it's saying is this. It's saying, my conviction regarding what I know is absolutely true. My conviction about what I know is absolutely true. And only when you really know will you act. And that up until you know, you will just say. And God doesn't want us to just say. He wants us to act. And Paul had learned to trust what he knew about God. Do you know that God can be trusted? When you truly believe in your guts, that's in your, in your spirit, you will trust him. You will trust in him and not in yourself. Can you truly say, God can be trusted? And I say today, along with Paul, Yes, you can know that God can be trusted. And you might say, well, how can you know? And I will say to you, trust him and find out. Trust and see. Trust and see that he can be trusted. Everything that God has to <coughs> offer us is good. But it has to be received through faith. And fear will rob us, rob us of our ability to stand firm in our faith. Believing and receiving is all available, providing we trust him. Paul tells Timothy to guard. And this means Paul wants Timothy to know the truth that he's inspired him with, uh, the truth about uh, what he knows about God. He wants Timothy to stand steadfast so that the truth will be proclaimed to others through his life testimony. Paul says, through the Holy Spirit who indwells you in the who you are, and I've said before, the Holy Spirit lives inside your spirit so that your spirit can take charge of your heart and your emotions and your will. The Apostle Paul makes sad reference to good friends he has known in Christ. Those who have let him down and let God down by turning away from the truth that they received. And they had abandoned him and the truth that they said they believed in. Not only did they abandon Paul, but they had abandoned their brothers and their sisters in Christ also. Because they set an example to their brothers and sisters by abandoning the truth that they should not have set. And we will all know those who have proclaimed the gospel but have drifted away. We call them backsliders. Paul asks God for mercy for a faithful friend, a friend who may have abandoned him. Paul brags on his testimony, this man's testimony, uh, this friend, and the service which he rendered to Paul while he was in Rome. And he wants God to bless this man. He doesn't say that he was a believer or a brother. He doesn't say uh, that he wandered off from the faith. But he does say to God, God, have mercy on him. And this man, this man had no assurance of salvation. There was no conviction. He had no knowledge 
that he was God's, that he was he had made God his Lord. And God wants us to have such a conviction that we know that we have put our trust in him for salvation. That we know that it's him who we have believed. The goodness of God comes when we put our trust in him. What are, what are the, the, the sound words that the Apostle Paul talks about? But he could have meant clean talking, or he could have meant that which reflects what is true about what you know is true about God. James says to us, I will show you my faith by what I do, not by what I say. Nevertheless, words still have an important part to play in how we faithfully and sincerely conduct ourselves. Those who have put their trust in God have been redeemed. And for the, un for the unredeemed, they are still under the judgment of God. Your neighbours, your family, your friends, people you work with, they're still under the judgment of God. But do you know that God is able to save them too? Able to take care of them even as he's taking care of you. And the way he does that is by them also putting their trust in him. And how will they put their trust in him? They will put their trust in him as they see the testimony of your life being worked out in the, in the way you live and the, and the light that you shine. Brothers and sisters, we are challenged by this chapter to be those who awaken within us the revelation that God has placed there to shine out to others the goodness of God. Well, I'm finished there. So I'm going to finish up in a prayer. Heavenly Father, we know that the, uh, the, the, the revelation that Paul brings to us today uh, is a challenge. It brings us to a place where we have to ask ourselves, where are we in this journey? Where are we in this understanding of allowing God to shine out of our lives? Holy Father, forgive us where we have easily been persuaded not to remain faithful. Forgive us when we have not trusted in your word, but trusted in what we think and what we feel. May your spirit rise up in us and show us how to hold on to the things you say and believe them so that they help us as we journey through life. Take away all of the rubbish and replace it with the security of grace and love and peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.